We're pleased to announce that this episode of the Talking Walls podcast is sponsored by Green King Sport, where football is more than a game. Green King Sport venues are showing every single one of Wolves' televised fixtures across the 23-24 season. And with over 900 sports pubs based in the UK, it doesn't matter where you are, you can watch every minute of the action. If you download the Green King Sports app, you can grab 10% off drinks whenever there's a football match on. But also, this month, there's thousands of points of free Guinness to be won and the chance to win one of six holidays as well. Hello and welcome back to the Talking Wolf podcast. I'm your host, Matt Cooper, and today I'm joined alongside one of the Talking Wolf's founders in Dave as a party. Dave, how are you, mate? I'm very well, mate. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not too bad, bro. Thanks. Um, just us two again today. Um, no Finn and no Jord, but for good reason for Jord, because our, our sources are telling us that tomorrow he may or may not be tying the knot. It is, it is tomorrow, isn't it? I, I believe so, yeah. Tuesday when this comes out, or, or Monday night, actually. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, tying the knot, which is, which is fantastic. We didn't get an invite, so, you know, good I hope you. he enjoys it, but, but not too much. Enjoy it by being <laughs> disciplined. <laughs> but he's uh he's over in Antigua at the minute. We're waiting to uh, waiting to get married, which it looks if anyone's got him on, on socials, it looks a wonderful place. Would have been nice to visit, but you know, it's uh you know, <laughs> no, maybe, maybe, so, yeah. <laughs> maybe when he gets married again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, messing. But yeah, how's things are you, mate? How's your week been? You been up to anything? Yeah, it's, it's flown by if I'm I'm just I was saying to you earlier, I've uh the dangerous game of like daytime nap naps. So it was my day off today. Did quite a lot of stuff with the house this morning, then to the gym, then I had two hours nap. Went to the match yesterday, had my dinner, then had a two hour nap. Uh so but yeah, I just been just cracking on, mate. Work, gym, bit of football. So just keep myself busy, mate. And I'm I'm off to a quiz tonight, a football quiz. Been drafted in late last minute. So I have to test the ball knowledge. See what it's hopefully the, the career path game, mate. Because yeah, exactly. You're, like, you, 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 you're off to a winner there. You've been going yeah. to the gym quite a lot recently from your stories, mate. Obviously, if you don't put it on your story, you don't actually. No, see it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, um, it doesn't, yeah, it's not. It's not a gain if you don't put it on your story, it's mate. It's true, yeah. mate. It's yeah. true. No, yeah, well, I've. Uh, I reckon I've been on average at least three or four times a week since like start of December, which is pretty good. And genuinely, if she told me in December, I'd still be doing it now. I'd laugh at you, but no, it's it's all right to be fair. And I, it's not even like it, sometimes it's like a proper pain in the ass to go, uh, or or a thought it would be. But now nah, once you're there, it's sound. Um, so yeah, enjoying it. In, unless you injure yourself, you never regret a, regret a workout, mate. Nah, it's pain as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I do a lot of cardio still as well. And I think uh, I just got to. I think I've lost a little bit of weight, but just got to get a bit more toned now. Get get summer body ready now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, once you get once you get into the swing of things, though, with the gym, it's uh, and you make it part of like your you're not you're non-negotiable for the week. Yeah, yeah, I think it's I think it's easier than not. Sometimes I have to drag myself, but I'm I'm down nearly a stone and a half since Jan, mate. You're only coming yeah, to the end of the well done. Yeah, for uh, having my arm off. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, what well, is that dieting or lack or no alcohol or or what? Um, I think a bit of everything, mate. I've been I've been going to the gym probably four times a week, minimum. Ten thousand steps a day, minimum. Oh. Um, calorie counting, make sure my protein goes. To, honest talk, welcome back to talking fitness. <laughs> um, and then also alcohol. I had I had to be fair. I had a heavy week last week. I had a leaving do. I went out with the lads on Saturday because the missus was away. But that's the third time I drank since Boxing Day. I used to drink pretty much every weekend, so it definitely helps, mate. But everything in moderation, you still got to enjoy yeah. yourself, haven't you? Yeah, I'm gonna get on the I'm gonna get on the Eddie Abu diet. I think. <laughs> Fuck up. Shit. Guys, what is this shit? Nah, he uh, he's a bit of a clown, really, isn't he? Yeah, I know. He's funny. He's funny. One of my one of my mates doesn't. He won't listen to this because he's a Warsaw fan, but it's his birthday. Um, in a couple of days, and we've got a cameo from Eddie Abu. Oh man, um, because he like all he goes on about is Eddie Abu. He's like, Yeah, he's the man, like that's why he's in such great shape. Nothing to do with probably the amount of steroids he's taken in all of his life. You but, see what he has for he has like eight, eight boiled eggs for his lunch. 
and, he's and got, feta cheese. It's mad. Yeah, he, he, I think he's got some like condition where he can't. It's it's like an it's like an uh, analogy where you, where you can't have like raw food. So like if put like chicken thighs in the pan with onions, then like avocados, then like blueberries, Cin- cinnamon and stuff as well. He puts like, in proper random stuff in it. Oh god, like yeah. it must be tough. I think your body like rejects the food if it's mm. like raw. Fucking hell. What, wait, wait the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Dave, um, I'd really, really love to talk about Wolves versus Sheffield United, but I just don't think we can talk about it first without talking about the Astro Payo, what a goal winner. Mate, Ed, that, Ed I believe his name. Yeah, that whole half time was better than the match because you got the Astro Payo and oh, the foundation yeah. game as well. <laughs> that's gone viral on Twitter as well, isn't it? Because the one lad that played for the Wolves uh, foundation team, mate, it's it's huge, it? know, it's it's six foot three, six foot four. Thought Sasha would come back for a little bit there. Eh? He's just firing the miss. Um, yeah, there's been there's been a couple of comments are a little bit below the belt, but a lot of it I think seemed like a good good taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I enjoy it like every because I do one or two a season, and then they're always really really good value to be fair. So, uh, but yeah, the oh what a goal! There's no point in us doing it now. So we we'll probably get the call up next week. Oh lads, it's hundred quid now, so you can uh, you can get involved now if you want. Oh yes, Sal, no worries. Yeah, I think well, I, I I didn't actually see. Yeah, he he. It's probably the first time that somebody that can actually kick a ball has done it for a few weeks. To be fair, and then the first one was about his first shot was just wide of it, probably like a couple of yards wide of the 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 thing. And when he hit the second one, it was like just a half a second of silence because everyone's like, "Where's the ball gone?" I mate, he hit it sweet, like straight through, and it was yeah, yeah, bang on that was. So I, I'd, I'd, I'd gone down for a slash, and I was, um, I was up in, the, I was up in the, the Billy Wright, um, away from the North Bank, thanks to a uh, Budweiser footballer who, who dropped us oh, a couple sure. of complimentary tickets. So big thanks to those guys. Um, no free beers or anything, just just the seats. You know, take take what we can get. If you do want to sponsor the podcast, Budweiser, and you are listening. <laughs> And don't bother because we're with Green King, the home of sport now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I went down for a for a slash, and then I heard like, is it is it Gemma, the announcer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'd come back up to my seat, and I just heard like screaming. I was like, "What's going on?" Yeah. Like, people were like, "He's done it! He's done! It. He's done the what I got all the Astro Pay." I was like, "You're joking!" I, like, <laughs> I, 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 I think they, I think they needed to make the hole bigger. Which is the first time I've ever said that in my life. Um, but I feel like if you say, so I think to, getting it in, in two is difficult. But I think if you had like five shots, you'd find your range a little bit, wouldn't you? And you'd probably like. If you, if you can kick, like if you can hit a ball half you easy. Can kick and ball. No, no yeah. disrespect to some of the guys that have been on, but some of them couldn't even get it off the ground the last few weeks. So and I'm not saying I would get it in because I probably wouldn't, but at least I know I'd have a half decent attempt at it. Uh, but yeah, that was the first guy. Like you could tell, the first shot I was like, oh, here we go. But the second one was bang on. Apparently, been practicing. I don't know how. Yeah, because I think you have to sign up at the fan zone, don't you, to be able to participate in it? Yeah. Um, no, but I think I think the a fella's name was Ed. Correct. If it's not Ed, I apologise. But fair play to you, mate, because it's been how many weeks? Mm-hmm. If it's a one hundred oh, pound roll, two season, two seasons. Apparently, that'd be, that'd be a, a, a long time. Yeah. Um, and the pros have had to go at it and I've seen how difficult it is. So I do feel for the bloke who stepped Afterwards. Who is Matt, it? Matt, you're stepping up to win £100. Oh, oh yes, Sal. <laughs> I love this imagine if he won it. He just blasted it in first time. Oh, sad, okay. Oh, yeah. God, imagine. I, I, don't, I don't think the price plot's that big for considering like, the weight. Is it seven and a half yeah, grand? It, yeah, he won just under, just under eight grand, I think, the guy. Eight, nine, I think it was. And it's loaded um, into your Astro Pay account, isn't it? I think you can draw that. <laughs> you can, yeah. I've done it before, yeah. I was going to say, that's a right of kicking it, bollocks. Yeah. And you can only spend it in the Wolves mega store. Yeah. <laughs> like when Wolves fuck something up, it's like, all right, we'll give it you back as Wolves cash. So basically, you guys aren't losing any money. So. Yeah, cheers, lads. I'll pay them all just month in Wolves cash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, but yeah, but like you said, the disability game as well. I think it was Cardiff the first time they did that. Yeah. yeah. And it was excellent. So... I mean, it's a it's a great spectacle, especially like after the 30, first forty five minutes that we just watched. But you know, congratulate the club on it because it is like obviously such a good opportunity for those who take part. And even as like uh, as a, as a match going fan, it's like, it's class to watch. I'd be, I'd be intrigued if they actually have like a 
a team like on a regular basis because every the walls were smashed whoever they played every time I watch those games. Um, so I'd be I would be very interested to see if they've got like a, a league or something. Don't know. Not that I'd go, like no, I wouldn't go out my way to watch the matches like, but I'd be interested to see how how well they're doing. Yeah, it's faster. You can do, yeah. you can see how much it means to those participants. I did feel a little bit sorry for the uh, the blades keeper though. Oh mate. He, he, he didn't get a touch all game, did he? Really? That, that, he, yeah, he did just picking the ball out of the back. <laughs> yeah, just the, the, that, that, yeah that, the, the big lad that Walls had in the middle who kept scoring the goals. Which it was like good. having a sixteen-year-old against like an under fours game, wasn't it? It was mad. Just Some smashing it. Yeah. No, and that was viral. So fair play to him. Um, do you want to talk about the game? I suppose if you. Yeah, we better. Yeah, we. Yeah. <laughs> I, did, I, I never. Yeah, I never thought that we would. Be sitting here saying oh, one nil win in the Premier League, like oh, so it was crap. But to be fair, mate, I don't think the first half was was that bad. Um, I thought I thought we played all right. I feel like we created a fair amount of chances. We were a little bit indecisive in and around the penalty area. I feel like some of the decision making was poor. But apart from that, Dave, I thought the first half was was okay. Lacked. <clears throat> Tem- lacked a bit of tempo, but you know, we, I think going one and a half time, you, you're laughing. I think that was that, that's bang on. It was like the lack of composure, really, in, in certain areas, which held us back a little bit. But I think if you ignore the second half an hour, I think the most important thing was to get a goal before half time because you knew that Sheffield United would have to, if, if you offered them a nil nil at the start of the game, Sheffield United yesterday, they would have taken it. So the crucial thing for us was to get that goal before half time. and. Uh, you know, there were, there were times where Neto picked the ball up on, on you know, on, out wide and just whip it in. There was like, you got to consider now, under Gary O'Neill, when you're attacking, a lot of the time you've got three or four players running into the area at all times. Um, so just whip it in and then you kept trying to cut it back, eventually losing out of the ball. It, it, I felt Neto had quite a frustrating game overall. But, but then the first time we actually whipped the ball into the box, eight in Ori, and it's a glancing header by Sarabia and it goes in and you won the luck. So... You knew you knew what type of game it was going to be from minute one with Sheffield United. Really, the goalkeeper taking a while to you know take the goal kicks. The referee, I was a little bit frustrated that he didn't sort of stamp his authority on the game a lot a lot sooner. He's not a referee that's had many Premier League matches, and I think he could have really stamped his mark on on that by you know hurrying the keeper up, which he wasn't that interested in doing. But first half was all right. You know, we allowed Sheffield United a couple of breaks and I think against a slightly better team, they might have, you know, punished us. But ultimately, we had, you know, we were the better of the two sides in the first half, definitely. I don't I don't think the referee can really hurry the keeper up, though, because it's... I know that... Was it Heckingbottom before? Yeah. He had said... And you, you know, they know exactly what they're doing, by the way. It's not, the, mm. it's not a tactical thing. But they obviously all come short and the keeper says, no, we're going to go long. And they all run upfield and they all bunch into the area. Like it adds, what, 25 seconds, 30 seconds on. But mm. I suppose as a referee, you can't, you can't really stop it, can you? Because it's just part and part. It's one of the, he, the ref knows what they're doing. Everyone else knows what they're doing. But it's a little mm. bit, a little bit helpless. But I, I think Neto, you could see he was cut a little bit of a frustrating figure anyway. But so, I don't want to say like because people say this is why we can't have nice things, but there was a couple of times and it's been throughout the season where things haven't gone his way or a player hasn't passed to him and he's like throwing a little bit of a strop. I'm just like, just keep going, just keep mm-hmm. going. That's all, you, all you've got to do. But I know we had a question last week around like all the press going to his head and stuff, which I don't think is the case, but I just wish he'd just get on with it a little bit more like the rest of them. I know, he's, I know he's a superstar, but. He's a, like, he's a brilliant footballer. It's just at times, and I'm not saying it's every game, but I felt at times yesterday he was playing at like half speed as well, as if he was like, he, and it's not the case. And it's not, I don't want to just point the finger at him. And I suppose when you've got, you're always going to look at your best player in the team because when someone's consistently delivering, you always expect that level of performance. And I just feel, felt from Neto, he just looked a bit half arsed yesterday. Um, you know, so I'm hoping he can really kick on again. And, you know, games like the Newcastle game Saturday, for argument's sake, you'd assume they'll play a much higher line and we can see the best of Neto on the counter-attack. Um, but, yeah, I, I was just a bit frustrating yesterday with him. But overall, you know, first half, we, we were OK. We were OK. Probably didn't test their goalkeeper enough, but, um, you know, did what we needed to do, really, and going at half-time, won the look. Yeah, I don't... Like, I don't think that... 
he had a necessarily a bad game, but when everything goes through him and he's so affecting the other games, almost like you said, though, a bit of a victim of his own success. So when he does have a quieter game, it's kind of amplified more because you expect a lot from him. I thought he looked a little I say sluggish from someone someone who's 18 stone. He, look, he looked he looked a bit sluggish, like mm. especially on the break. There's a couple of times where he got caught. Perhaps the fallback was just rapid, you don't know. But I feel like he didn't really get out of get out of that third, fourth gear. I don't know if that is, I don't know if that, if you felt the same, mate. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I don't know if it was a tactical thing as well. First half, especially, I noticed it throughout the game. Really, Aiden Ori was almost playing quite inverted. He was almost trying to play him as a as another central midfielder. Mm -hmm. But then there were times where Neto was sat really, really deep, and I saw him telling Aiden Ori, "You occupy that space." And I think he almost wanted to sort of either drag certain players out because ultimately, when you look at if if you were a manager playing Wolves, Neto is going to be the one that you're going to be pinning one or two defenders against. So he was trying to sit a little bit deep, and I think he was probably thought. I want to try and have a bit more joy running in from deep with the ball. So I don't know. He didn't have the he didn't have the impact on the game that you would have hoped hoped so. And there was a lot of hype around him, especially around the fantasy Premier League managers looking at these fixtures, thinking, oh wow, Neto versus Sheffield United, this should be good. But I think ultimately all Wolves fans knew what the situation was going to be. It was never ever going to be a pretty game. I know they've been smashed a few times. I don't think Wolves Although we, we would love it to happen. I don't think Wolves were ever going to go into this game and beat Sheffield United 5 and then It's just not how we do things. So mm -hmm. the most important thing was to obviously get the three points. But we did definitely, you know, we definitely made hard work of it in the second half. Watching up in the in the Billy Wright, you get you get a different perspective on the game. It's just like I know we got his goal, which was well taken, but I thought Sarabi is like off the ball. He's so good. Like, yeah, he's like, really good we've yesterday. spoken about, about it before, but he's 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 improved so much this season. And looks like an actual Premier League footballer now. Um, the, the goal itself, though, I think eight, we know Aitno is a wonderful footballer, but his end product is lacking. I think that's one thing that you could say he could work on. And if he did work on that and improve it, he probably wouldn't be playing at Wolves. But to put that in with his weaker foot, when we've not really seen him put that many greater balling with his left foot, I know he swings he swings a leg at it a little bit, but mate, what well, it's it's like inch perfect that pass, and it's still a really difficult chance to take for Sarabia. The header's brilliant as well. He got some serious height on that jump for the header as well. Um, so probably the two of the most unlikely things, you know, and Aiden Ori whipping it in from there and, and Sarabia scoring a header as well. But yeah, it was a brilliant, brilliant goal. And like I said, really, really important for us. But uh, Sarabia's goal numbers, I think you look at Huang, Sarabia, Neto and Cunha now, the numbers that they've both they've all produced, both goals and assists, is, is fantastic. And mm. again, you said that to, to a Wolves fan in, in August, these four players are going to be producing these numbers. You would have laughed at somebody. So, um, really, really impressive on on how well they they're all doing. And fingers crossed. You know, obviously, Kunya's going to be a big miss. I felt he would have had a real, real big impact on that game yesterday if he was fit. Uh, but the fact that you know, hopefully, Huang gets back to the form he was in before the Asia Cup. Um, but the, to have that ta the players as talented as that and that you can rotate and bring in and out of the team, which need Belgar to. You know, kick on now. It, it, even he's got a few goal contributions, to be fair to him. And obviously, he's been played out of position at times. Uh, but yeah, we just need him to kick on a little bit, really. And then we've got, you know, some really, really talented forward players. Yeah, I see quite a lot of stick, stick for Bellegarde, but I feel like it's a little bit unjust because he's been playing as a mostly a, a makeshift striker or just coming off the bench and playing, playing anywhere when he's predominantly played on the right or in a, in a midfield mm. three. So. I know O'Neill said he wants a bit more from him, but since some players like Dubby, my worst player, which that's is, harsh. Yeah, I think it's incredibly harsh, especially in his, in his first season. Um, yeah, I, I think he, I think it's difficult with the way that we play at the moment. I, I sort of, he, he was more of a, he played more central as a central midfield, obviously as a central midfielder um, at Strasbourg, but occasionally played out wide as well. And I think he's definitely got the ability to play out wide. You know, we've seen that he's his skill on the ball and his ability on the ball. Um, but I think ultimately, you know, when you're playing this system that we, we're playing and you have two holding midfielders, there's not really a place for that unless you sw switch to, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I think he's definitely got a place in the team and a talented footballer, but sometimes it can just take that little while to adjust. We've seen it with Sarabia. We've seen it with a lot of football players. that You know, it's very rare that a player comes to Wolves and within the first season really kicks on. Cunha, perfect example. It's taken him six months before we've seen the best of him in a wool shirt. So, mm. um, yeah, hopefully it's the same with Belgarde. Seeing kick on towards the end of the season, hopefully a much better campaign next year. Second half, mate, I thought, well, 
first half was okay. I thought we'd come out and probably put get another couple and put the gang to bed. But it was it was a nervy, nervy Molyneux. Um, I wrote about this in my BBC article, which will be out Tuesday. Mm. I just it it frustrates me, and especially where I was sitting around like new people. You, you're playing it around uh, from the back, and you're going side, and sometimes you have to go sideways to go forwards, and like. Fans are like, go on, play it forward, and like getting a little bit agitated. I think towards the end, I get it because I like, they were hanging on and it was just complete lack of composure. But you can't always just force a pass, and it's I find it I find it really frustrating. Sometimes you just need a bit of patience. Yeah, but I agree with that. But at the same time, it it wasn't just the one or once or twice. It was happening often. It was like a. a a spell of about 20 minutes where we really, really struggled to play out from the back. Um, and there were once or twice we played the direct ball and Neto was in behind. But I felt for the for that second half, it was like we were playing with a man down. Like, we were just awful. I felt, you know, Sheffield United as well were playing. Their back line was on the halfway line. And like I said, you go in at half-time one up, Sheffield United have got to come out and play. And that, I thought, I was running my hands together at that because their defence was all over the shop as it was even playing a you know, deep line. So I thought, with them playing higher, you know, you're laughing. But Neto, we, we couldn't get the ball to Neto. I felt Huang had a really quiet game. But what it was, I, I just felt the team was too stretched. We had the ball, say, from a goal kick. Dawson was the main player picking up the ball. He, he really didn't didn't want to trust Kilman too much on the ball. Lamina was sort of playing much further up next to Huang to, to maybe add a bit more physical presence up top. And then ultimately, you got Zhao Gomez on, the, on his own in the middle. So I felt as a team, if we just all came a little bit deeper to try and, you know, keep a bit of the possession, we would have been okay. But um, yeah, just a really, really strange second half. And just just the ball retention um, was one. And like you said, it's nice to keep the ball, knocking it about. But ultimately, you know, it, I think with the way Sheffield United set up, it, it, as a Wolves fan, if you knew how that, you know they were going to play, you know, so high, you'd be rubbing your hands together, thinking, right, we should get a couple of goals here. And we didn't really have a sniff second half. No. I still think there needs to be a bit of patience. So, like, as soon as you get the ball, when I play it out from the back, it's like people moaning and whinging. Like, these things take a little bit of time. You can't just you can't just lump it forward and you you throw on goal and you score. Mm. Like, sometimes you have to try and find it, find another way. Yeah, no, no, I do get that as well. But it, it was just like the same. It was the same sequences, and it like I said earlier, it didn't just happen one or two times. It's like four or five times where, to be fair to Dorsey, he's got the ball. It's like, who do I pass to here? Because you've got Neto, Lamina, Huang, Sarabi all at the far end. You know, Kilman's on there, but once or twice he passed to Kilman. Instead of opening his body up, he sort of turned the other way and almost like, you know, threw himself under the bus and, and swung the momentum back to Sheffield United. So um, I, I do think against a much better team, if we played like that or struggled to play it out from the back like that, we would get punished. Um, so we were quite fortunate that we were playing arguably one of the worst Premier League teams in some time. But you know what? They, they did, I thought Sheffield United did okay second half. I don't mean they'll stay in the Premier League. I think they're a cert to go down, as are Burnley. But I think they'll pick up points if they, they perform like that against some teams this season. Yeah, I think um, I think they did cause us a few problems at the end. And they caused us a few problems on the in, in the first half, on the, on, on, the, on the break. I just felt defensively we were a little bit, I don't know, just, just like sloppy, a little bit kind of... Half soaked. I, I like the one ball went out to um was played up to like whoever the player was on the far side against that Nuri. And like obviously the they've gone up to contest it. And if you're like Totty there, you almost like anticipate that, that was right, the first you, half that was Bruce. You, yeah. you just you just drop a little bit deeper, don't you? Because if he doesn't yeah. win the header, you're in a better pit. And he's like getting sucked in in the through. Yeah, it's like, yeah. like basic stuff. No yeah. criticism oh. of Totty. I thought he was I thought he was great again yesterday. But no, I agree. That was the one in the first time. Yeah. 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 I know we got beat and it was just like so simple that was for them. But I just felt like, you know, we had to, and it was interesting because you don't tend to see like the teams towards the top end of the table. But, you know, when you've got a team that are happy to consistently take the, like, the long throws and things like that, that causes some problems because you don't see that often in the Premier League. I think Cardiff scored from one against us a few years ago in the Premier League with a long throw. 
and then mm. Ryan Bennett started doing it for us a few weeks later. Um, but you know, things like that are difficult to defend against sometimes because all it takes is a slight deflection or or a, you know a touch off the head to, and it can go absolutely anywhere. So I felt defensively we did enough to stop them from scoring. You know, defensively again we did okay. Um, but ultimately, the, the level of performance was nowhere near what it should have been. And Gary O'Neill made that pretty clear, to be fair. You know, he, he's not stupid. He said in his post-match press conference that how disappointed he was in the second half. So hopefully it's just a one-off. You know, we've been OK. You know, against Spurs, we, we were really good. Um, so hopefully we can kick on because this week, which I'm sure we'll talk about, this week we've got two big games. And if we perform like that, you know, we, we will get punished. Mm. I think that's a nice little segue, mate, to move on to the uh, the Brighton game. Are you, are you going to this? I am. I, I was going to say reluctantly, but, you know, any home game I would have gone to, I'm a little bit disappointed with the price, but I suppose that's, you know, that that's football nowadays. So, um, I am going. Be interested to see what the final attendance is and what the atmosphere is like. Um, but, yeah, it'll be, it'll be a tr- tough game. I, f- I feel we've got enough, but it will be a tough game. Yeah, I'm um, I'm not going. I'm, I've got a busy week anyway, and I ain't going to finish work till late. But also, I could make it if I really wanted to. But I just think the pricing's a bit. I just think I just think it's expensive. To be fair, I don't know. Obviously, they have their own commercial models, and they'll understand like what kind of attendance they need to make at that price for make a turn of profit mm. or whatever. But I just think you could have packed the. If it was like fifteen pound a ticket, you could have packed the ground out, and you could have given the lads a real good chance of getting over the line in a, against a real tough opposition. Mm. So, yeah, I just feel I feel like they've, they've missed, the, missed an opportunity well, there. But I'd be interested to see, because Brian, you know, midweek as well is a long, long way. So I, 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 I could be wrong, but I'd, I'd, be, unlo- I'd, I'd be shocked if it was any more than 27,000, 26,000. Yeah, I think that's, that, that's the level it's going to be at, yeah. Um, you know, so I I don't know. I think each, each throw, I feel like it's... Probably top end of what I would have. I think it was thirty quid. I know it sounds daft because it's only a fiver, but ultimately, like this, you know. But yeah, I, uh, I'm going anyway. Um, but fingers crossed, you know, it's it's a win. Brighton have had, you know, Brighton have been okay. This, well, I say okay, they've been good this season, but they have had, you know, um, a few issues themselves. I think they made hard work of it against Everton at the weekend as well. So you know, and we played well against them at the Amex. So I think you know. We've got, we have got a chance, and with their squad at the moment, we've got a chance of going through to the next round. Yeah, well, there's potentially no Mitoma. I think he picked up a back injury at the weekend, which Samaida will be absolutely uh, <laughs> over the moon with because he seems to be his kryptonite, doesn't he? Samaido's fantastic one on one until he comes up against Mitoma and then he ends up just having a, a bad day in the office. But um, Billy Gilmore got sent off at the weekend as well, Dave. Um, in the Premier League, he will miss this game, owner. Yeah, I believe I've not seen the tackle. I don't know how, how bad it was. To be fair, I've not watched any of the it's highlights. Yeah, for yeah. me, it's a sending off. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's one of those where he's caught him a little bit high on the top of the ankle. So yeah, yeah but he was he was a um, he was a bit of a shit house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a bit of a shit house at the Amex. So yeah, that's yeah. a boost. Yeah, Pedro, very very good footballer as well. Um, and I think you've put here another couple of players, Hinchwood and March as well. So, you know, they've, they've got some good players out, but ultimately they're a very good football inside still. Um, you know, Deserve, done a very good job. And um, I think he'll have opportunities in the summer to move on if he wishes. Um, but they're ultimately, you know, I think we're at their, le- at their level. And I know they've done us in a couple of times. We got a heavy defeat earlier on in the season at Molyneux. They, they smashed us at the Amex last year. But I think on our day, we can really compete with them. And ultimately... This will be an interesting task because between now and the end of the season, Brighton are one of the teams that if if we want to take Europe seriously or take this charge yeah. for Europe seriously, Brighton are one of the teams that we've got to compete with ultimately. So mm. I don't think it's not going to be the end of the world either way. It would be brilliant to advance in the FA Cup. You know, there's still some unbelievable teams in it though. So it'll be very, very difficult to go all the way. But, um, you know, you win this you're into the quarterfinal, anything can happen. If you win that, you're in the semi final. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, Captain. Obvious. Yeah. But, um, I, I feel though, if you're any club getting into the last eight, you fancy yourself a bit, don't you? I definitely don't fancy us now, but I think if you beat Brighton, like you do, you do fancy your chances, especially when we've done it in recent time. I know the semi final, which we don't talk about, but yeah, we've done this. 
I, I think so now, and it's getting to the point that, you know, under Nuno, I felt like, you know, and that, that game against Watford, I think is probably, if you ask Nuno, or you ask any player from that squad, that would be one of their biggest regrets from their time at Wolves. You know, we've spoken to, I think Connor Cody spoke about it on other podcasts, Romain Say said it on our, on our podcast as well. But so, but I think it's get to, got to the point now where under Gary O'Neill, it, it's funny we saying this after such a you know disappointing performance yesterday. Under Gary O'Neill, it's probably getting to the point where you are confident that you can go to some of these big teams and beat them or at least compete with them. I think if you draw, even if it's Man City or Liverpool in the quarterfinal at Molyneux, you know it's probably going to be an evening game under the lights of Molyneux. Atmosphere is going to be unbelievable, and I think we've got every chance. They're the two for me. You got to avoid. Or if you do, or if you do draw them, you know, you knock one of those out. You've got every chance of going all the way. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. if you knock them out, you've yeah, got every chance right, of going all the way. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, you just cry. So it's one of those kind of podcast, mate. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, well, who knows? It's it, we've got a chance. We've got a, as good a chance as anybody else. And some of the teams, if you know, you get a fortunate draw. I think Maidstone are still in it against a championship team, aren't they, or League One team or something. You know, you draw them in the quarterfinal. Who knows? My dad, I've got that far. Big George Elikobi. Who, who have they got? Is it, in it like Coventry or something like that? Yeah, it, or? Well, it's Cov. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you, you, I mean, uh, these like so. You look at the the very quickly. You look at the team still in it now. Coventry, Maidstone. You'd back yourself against either of those. Bournemouth, Leicester. You'd probably back yourself. Although you know, both decent sides. Back yourself. Blackburn, Newcastle. I think Newcastle obviously is in a tough game. Luton City, Chelsea Leeds, are back in, obviously you back yourself against Chelsea, Forest United, obviously you're Sprite, and then Liverpool, Southampton. So, always an upset. So, I don't think it'll be Luton City, but, you know, Southampton could knock Liverpool out, um, especially with their sort of run of fixtures and their injuries at the moment. So, who knows? Would you say, I don't know, say we, we, get, we get through the next round, would you rather have... One of the big six at home or someone else away from home in the quarterfinal or non-big six away from home. Also, you probably want the team that you're most likely to beat away. Yeah. Like, you know, but I would back us against the big six team. And I think if if we get into the quarterfinals or, or you know, you're in the quarterfinals and even if you get a simple draw and City and Liverpool draw each other and uh, Man U's Chelsea draw each other for argument's sake, yeah. you know, you, you've got a good chance. Ideally, in the quarters, you want those big guys to play, you know, play each other and you've got a much more straightforward, you know, uh, route to the final. But ultimately, if you're going to win the FA Cup, you're going to have to be a couple of a couple of good teams. So, it, it's weird. I don't think it's something that realistically we could win it this year. Um but I think you start to realise that when you get into the quarterfinal. I think it was United um, when we beat them last time. It was you know, unbelievable, genuinely up there, best experience, like best atmosphere at Molyneux for a long time. Um, and it was like at full time, it was like, shit, we're going to Wembley, you know, for an FA Cup semi final. And obviously it didn't work out the way we wanted it to. But, you know, fingers crossed we can experience the same again. Although you, you obviously want us to, to win in the semi final this time. Mm. How do you think Gary O'Neill will, will look at this game, Dave? He played Sunday, played Wednesday, played Saturday. It's three games in, in less than a week. Quite a small squad, not many forward options. Cunha being out. It be, I think you'll see the likes of Doyle come in. Yeah. I think uh, B as well. Bueno, I, I would possibly say, if, if it were me, I'd bring Santi in for Dawson. Um, I would bring... Doyle in for either Gomez or Lamina. I think both of them are sort of, you know, are both quality players. And I think Gomez has really stepped up recently. Um, so I think he's more than on Lamina's level. Maybe uh, may, maybe Belgard in uh, for Huang or, or Sarabia. Possibly Huang, to be fair. I, I you know, I, it'll be, you know, a, a tough test, but a bit of rotation. And both these games are massive, both the Brighton game and the Newcastle game for different reasons. So, um, you know, if we can come out of this week with a win in the FA Cup and three points on Saturday, that'd be a phenomenal week. But if I had to pick out the two, I'd probably pick three points in the Newcastle game. Would you? Mm. I think. Uh, I don't know. If you, actually, you know. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> 
No, if I could win. Yeah, if I could win. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. City, City away in the quarter. Yeah, final. Sam. Yeah, I feel like a lot, a lot's going to change in this Premier League running anyway. But Newcastle and West Ham have got games in hand anyway, haven't they? So, so our, our running between now and the end of the season, or well, up until the May. The next so month and a half is fucking ridiculous. It's like, March and April. We've got some extremely good fixtures. Um, and it's in our own hands, really. And, you know, there's a lot of quality. Like I said last week, I think there's a lot of quality ahead of us in the Premier League table. So you don't want to get too overexcited yet. But if we could play to the quality that we know Wolves can play and stay consistent, then we've got, we've got, any, you know, we've got every chance. You see the headlines now. Gary O'Neill sacked after Wolves winless in eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is what happened to Bruno Large, though. And he had a bad, yeah, yeah. around this sort of time of the season, really bad result, bad run. Jimenez gets sent off and it just falls apart. But you look at it's the last three are very very difficult fixtures. I think we play Liverpool and City in our last three, so yeah. you want to get to a point there where your fate's pretty much decided either way. Yeah, because An- Anfield against uh, against Liverpool on the final day of the season in Klopp's last game, you might as well just fucking pack up. Got a ticket up for sale, forty grand if anyone wants it. Yeah, if anyone wants mine as well, <laughs> can I be? <laughs> Dave, you banned, you sold your season ticket. I'm so sound up. I mean, Barbados, I got 40 grand, mate. I ain't bothered. <laughs> Thank you very far. <laughs> yeah. On holiday. I haven't bought a house anymore. Put you on the dodgy stick. Yeah. Um, we mentioned then the Newcastle game, Saturday 3 pm. Nice uh, nice to actually have a Saturday 3 pm against Newcastle. I feel like it's been a while. I feel, I feel like those games are always like daft times. I think it gets highlighted more because of the, the distance, but. Um, we all know how it ends, Dave, and that's 2-2, two, two, which is the same as the last <laughs> how many results. It's always a draw, isn't it? More draws than IKEA this week, to be fair. But, yeah, um, yeah no, so we played them. It's either an evening game on a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon kickoff, isn't it, normally? Mm. Sees. Um, we had a Friday night game on it a couple of years ago, or last year against them as well. I think so, yeah. Um, Again, a, a good team. It's similar to Brighton, really. It just lacked that little bit of consistency that they showed last year. And I think both teams, uh, have, you know, got quite a few injuries. So, um, again, if we played to the best of our ability, definitely the chance to get three points. But like I said, against Brighton, Newcastle are another one of those teams that ultimately we're going to be competing against if, if we want another shot in, uh, at Europe. So, three, three points here and a massive swing on Newcastle. And that, that'd be a big result for us. Hopefully. Newcastle will still without a few players, notably Joe Linton, Wilson, Pope, the Bradford Gazil, so Carriers might be playing. Um, I, uh, the, the form's been mixed of late. They picked up a couple of wins, but I, w- I watched them against um, Arsenal on Saturday night. I know, uh, again, I know they've got injuries and whatnot, but they were poor. Uh, but I think Arsenal are the best team in the league at the minute, so it's probably more of a reflection on, on how good Arsenal are, but Dave, regardless of that, it's still there's still a good side. Still very yeah. well drilled side. It's gonna be it's gonna it's gonna be tough. Yeah, and when, if if Newcastle have a good start as well, St James's Park is rocking. Oh, yeah. Um but on the flip side of that, if they have a rocky start, you know, they are a, a squad that can get on the back very, very quickly of the of the players. So um yeah I think we've got the we have got the quality and I think You'd assume they'll want to play out and attack us a little bit more than um, than Sheffield United did for argument's sake. So it could work in our favour. We've been very good away from home so far this year. So um, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Should be an interesting one. Not going, but um, yeah, just, I'll uh, I'll find a way to watch it. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I thought it was international break this weekend. <laughs> uh, we discussed. Um, I'm going to Latvia on a stag do. So. I think I think what's happened is the lads have put like two dates in the chat and they've put this weekend and they've put the weekend of the Villa game, which I didn't want to miss. And I'll pick this weekend because I probably wouldn't be going to Newcastle away. But yeah. I think because I've picked this weekend or we picked this weekend, I, I just felt it was in international break. I looked at the fixture. I was like, we ain't playing yeah. Newcastle on Saturday, are we? Yeah. Which, I mean, we'll, well, I'll try and find a boozer to try and watch it. But... um. Pretty much, I think there's about 10 of us going. Um, two are Villa fans, seven are West Brom fans. <laughs> oh, well, at least you've well, you can wind them up anyway. So. Yeah, so the uh, the, the stag is um, he's a big Albion fan, so we've got him. Uh, I've got him my signed Steve Bull shirt to wear one night. <laughs> um, 
which has been which has been signed off by the rest of the Albion fans going, even though they hate Stevie Ball and hate Wolves, they're, uh, they're 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 happy to do it. So I'll um, I'll make sure I get I, I get some pictures of that. But yeah, it'd be um, if any, I mean if anyone's ever been to Riga in Latvia, let us know in the comments anything you think. It's meant to be all right, I think. It's yeah, to be okay. I've, I've been doing a bit of research the past couple of days. I, at the time, I was like, yeah, I'll book it, whatever. But, but actually, looks quite a nice place. Yeah. Um, oh, some of my mates want to do the Gillette Soccer Saturday Challenge on Saturday, but um, I'm I don't at work think you're going till... to Riga. <laughs> no, no, I was going to say <laughs> I, I'm at work till four, so I said, well, it depends where where you're going because if it's like Carlisle, I'll be like, sound, enjoy your weekend. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, you know what it'll be. You know, it'll be it'll be some yeah, either, but we've been, we've been, yeah, we've been yeah, twenty yeah. seconds of a corner. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, <laughs> oh, the grain store. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah. I've never done that Gillette Soccer Saturday Challenge, but. Uh, I think it'd be interesting. Know. It should be it should be good, good fun. They were like, oh, we should set like parameters or like where we can and can't go. Like, oh, but it sort of defeats the object, doesn't it? So mm. yeah, so Plymouth, absolute wounder if they uh, bag early, but um no, nah, I'll, I'll see where it is before I commit to going anyway. I feel like next season we should do it. Yeah. No, on a, yeah. On a weekend where walls aren't playing. Yeah, yeah. Or at the like international break or something. Yeah, we yeah. could. No, no, not even the international break. Just like if Wolves well, fans on Friday, Friday or, Sunday, or something or a Monday, yeah, we'll, we'll do it on we'll do it on a Saturday and we'll make a little video out of it. Yeah, that'd be good fun. Yeah, I think it would be. I think it. Would, I think it'd do well. You'd have to. Um, you'd have to give George six month notice. Sir. <laughs> there we have, have to get his yeah. leave approved. <laughs> Got to sign it off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with the future Mrs. Russell. By the time this comes out, the current Mrs. Russell. Mm -hmm. So. Wonderful stuff. Uh, Dave, just before we touch on the questions, would you snap my hand off for a point at St James's Park or do you think we can go there and get all three? I think we've got the quality to get all three, definitely. But I think if, as we speak now, with the run of fixtures and stuff, I'll probably take a point, yeah. I think I would as well. Mm. I think I would. Um, but I think these are the sort of games especially with the running towards the, the, the real kind of business end of the season, these next, what, seven or eight games, look, they, these are the teams that you should be getting something from, especially the teams at home. But I feel like you, you're Burnley away, you should be Villa away. He's, he's always, they're a great tie, but we somehow managed to always get, get something against them. But Newcastle away, I think you've got to get, if, if, you, if you're serious about Europe, which I still yeah. don't think we'll get, then you get a point there. It's a fantastic result. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. Moving on to the questions. Um, the Mars Music Show has got his, uh, his a customary question in. So if we get the Europa Conference League, do you think that we'll allow us to, to attract a higher calibre of player in the summer transfer window? Or do players not care, not care, players not care too much about the Europa Conference League for one season? Um... I think it, I think it would ultimately because you're still playing European football as such, but I don't think it's um, I don't mean it's overly attractive. It's not as attractive as the Europa League or the Champions League, but I, I don't know. I think I think it'll certainly help. You know, you get more money as a club, so you'll be able to you know shift that towards player wages and and stuff a little bit more, bit slightly bigger platform for players to perform at as well. So. I don't think it's a massive, massive boost, but it'll certainly help slightly. Yeah, you know, that massive boost. It reminds me of that um, Brian's Gun video on a Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, mate, absolutely. I think he might be a Wolves fan as well. Oh, yeah, he follows you, doesn't he? Follows Talking Wolves as well, I believe. So oh, is he? I think he might be a Wolves yeah. fan, yeah. Um, but yeah, it would be a massive, massive boost. Uh, <laughs> I don't I don't think it's the be all and end all. I feel that, like you said, Dave, it's a platform for for players to excel on. And to be fair, there's there's been some good teams in it this season, and you will come up against good opposition, <clears> especially <throat> in the in the later stages. But I think it's like don't get me wrong, the current squad will want to qualify for it. But I don't think in terms of acquiring new players, it's like, well, we've got European football conference league, they're gonna be clamoring to sign the wolves. Mm. I mean, I don't know. If it was the Europa League, yeah, it's a little bit different, but yeah, I don't think for the conference league. For fans, though, it is the be all and end all. But Ultimately, people... though, I think yeah. pre Premier League's are one for players abroad. You know, you can see now some of the, the lower teams of the Premier League can still sign some really, really good footballers. Uh, I think that in terms of, you know, being in the Premier League itself is a massive one. Um, 
Europa League and Champions League ultimately are, are the, the ones that you look at because you'll play the best teams in the world. You know, you could go into the Europa League and still play your know, likes of Barcelona's or your Inter Milan's or whatever, and you know, and stuff like that. Whereas the Conference League, you don't really get that as such. But you would back walls if if we got into it. I think again, very very early days, but you'll you'll be amongst one of the better teams in the competition. So it depends who wins it this year. I feel like oh, it's going to be like a hotbed of like Villa have got a chance this year. I think yeah, it's just going to be like an English like an English club from like, like Italian or something. Uh, like from like it was like perennial, perennially like eighth to twelfth, like winning yeah. winning every single year. Exactly. So so. We shall see. I'd love to qualify. I would absolutely. And I've, I've got the, the, I've got a bit more money than I did like three or four years ago in Europa League. So mm-hmm. like, I just couldn't afford to go. Every, like some, some people went to like Besiktas, um, and um, like Braga. Then they went to Espanya. Like they did the whole lot. And at the time, I was like, I couldn't afford it. Whereas now, a bit, a little bit older, I think I, I could try and do as many yeah. as I can. Plus, I got the annual leave to do it. So. I think it'd be, I think it'd be great, mate. Would you? Yeah. Uh, you'd probably do most of them, wouldn't you? Try my best. Financially, a little bit different to last time, but um, got no one holding me back as such at the moment. So I can do just, just do what I want, mate. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't mean that in a disrespectful oh, way. Oh, that's a that's a nasty yeah. mate. Close away. Close away. Was someone holding you back last time? No. Just, just no, nah, there weren't to be fair. Should we, should we move on? Should we move? Yeah, Let's yeah. move on. Let's move on. A bit flustered. Uh, Ethan is asking, <laughs> it is incredibly harsh after the run of games we've been on, but I think now is the time to drop Dawson. He seems to get caught for pace quite often and has made some mistakes, which has cost us gold recently as well. Thoughts on giving Santiago Bueno more minutes? To be fair, I won't be averse to this. I, I, from what I've seen from Bueno, apart from the Ipswich game, I've liked, but I don't think we're going to be seeing him regularly anytime soon. I think next season we'll, you'll see the, the the transition. Yeah, I think, um, like I said, if we can see him this week against Brighton, brilliant, because I think that'd be a nice, you know, just to try and integrate him a little bit more and get him some more minutes. I do agree. I think there's been moments last few weeks that have, you know, stuck out a little bit more. I felt Dawson, there was there was one yesterday against Sheffield United where he just, the reaction and the turn was so slow. Yeah. Um, so, but I think he's, he, I think people still do underestimate slightly how, important he is to that to that team defensively but I think uh, give Bueno a go against Brighton and, and fingers crossed we can get some more minutes between now and the end of the season as well yeah I agree <clears throat> I think they see him as the um, the successor to Dawson anyway agreed yeah um, but I think like you said Dave for what he gives in terms of leadership qualities and defending his area mm. I think he's class it's just those those spaces in behind but um Oh, I don't know who's asked this. Sorry, I haven't got I haven't got the name down. Um, but it's a great question. How many points do you think we'll get in our running of all all the winnable games between game week twenty seven and game week thirty three? And do you think we can go all the way in the FA Cup? I think we've spoken about the cup, mm. but the fixtures um, the the person is, is is suggesting is Newcastle away. So I think we get a, say a point there. They say a point, yeah. Yeah, Fulham at home. Good team, but you should beat them at home, you'd hope. Four points. Yeah. Bournemouth at home. Win. Villa away. We could be very optimistic and say a point, maybe. I say no, a let's go, let's go a lot. We're not gonna we're not gonna <clears> be unbeaten <throat> in all of them. So yeah, let's go. Yeah, none. Let's go zero points against the villa. And then when they do surprises, bonus. <laughs> um <laughs> Burnley away, win. I think a point. Oh, I just think Vinny could be tricky. You know, when people say our oh, turf moor's a tough place to go and have not won in like four, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Andrew Wolves, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, it's a Tuesday night. Is that what it is? Midweek, yeah, it's a midweek fixture. Oh, my, you know, I've never done turf moor. This could I'm be the season, twice. this could Don't be the bother. season. Don't oh. bother. It's like a bit of a time warp. It's like going up to Emmerdale. Let's do the time warp. What are we saying? Then? Nothing. I think point, point, point at Burnley. Oh, it's it's a, we're on the lower end here, so point we're going to look like Burnley. that. Yeah. So what we got here then? So Newcastle, one. Yeah. Fulham, three. Bournemouth, Four. three. Seven. So that's Lost seven. Villa. Yeah. Draw at Burnley. Point at Burnley at eight. Eight. West Ham at home. Win, 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 win. You think? 
Mate, we always do it at home. Mm. We always I do. Feel it like gonna, I think Moyes is going to turn a bit of a corner there. I think that'll keep no. it. 11. That's 11 points. And then Forest away. Forest point. away. 12, 12 points. I'd say I think 12 is a very fair reflection on that. Yeah. 12 points from seven games is not, is not awful in the Premier League. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I just think Forest is going to be, they're going to be right in amongst it, I think. They've got a, a pending points deduction. Nuno as well. Nuno into the mix. Chuck the needle that was in there last season into the mix. I mean, I'd love to get there and beat them, but I... It's always it's difficult place. Because especially you've got seven there. games away, you don't know what the table's going to look like. But if you're asking me now, 12 points in them games, slap your hand off. <laughs> well, and we predicted, what, one loss in seven as well. <laughs> but the points will balance themselves out. So I think 12, 12 from those will be sound. Yeah, but you could win four out of seven. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, I know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It'll balance itself out. Yeah. Um, Golden Palace, Wolves' majority of the time struggle with teams come to mind in part of the bus. It restricts our main strengths and counter-attacking. Surely in these games, it'd be best to start with two center arse and add another midfielder attacker. Most of the build-up play comes from the five, though. But it's, uh, the, it's, there were a lot of people mentioning this on the preview, but ultimately, you can still play with the three, but you just... And I think what he tried to do yesterday was, like I said, eight Nori put him inverted and almost had him as another central midfielder. But I think um, you just allow you, your wing-backs to have a little bit more, uh, go forward a little bit more. I still think you need the three there, uh, especially with eight Nori and Tomato. If you play the four, that those two are going to be a little bit more restricted and sit back a little bit more. So I would stick with... Um, I'm happy with the five, to be honest. Um, obviously, we still need to work a lot more on, um, on, on breaking these teams down. And I think Gary O'Neill made a lot of comments about that as well. In regards to, you know, he knows that we've struggled against these sort of teams. Um, so I think ultimately to come out at full time yesterday over 1 0, although it wasn't a great result, I think it'd be a bit of a sigh of relief, really. Yeah, I agree. I don't think I don't think it's as cut and dry as put another midfielder in there, put another attacker and you you score more goals. We've seen I mean what have we equaled our record points uh, goals total in the uh, the Premier League now? Forty four. No, we've got four, we've got we've got forty goals in the Prem. Um, so we'll definitely get the 44, but yeah, we've got 40 goals in the Prem. It's the quickest that we've hit this since the early 70s. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I, I, don't, I don't, I don't even think it's necessarily a, a formation thing either. I just think it's, it's a little bit more technical than that. So, I'm not, I'm, I'm happy with it. I think with a back five as well. Like if you had a back four, ultimately your two fullbacks are still going to have to sit quite deep. Mm. Whereas with a back five, because you got three, ultimately you got another two players bombing up, up, on forward, really. So it just depends the roles and you know there's a yeah there's a lot more to it than the four. We all, we saw him switch to it yesterday to be fair to try and add a little bit more presence in the midfield. But then by the by the end of the game you had Doc on as well. So you sort of went back to that five. So yeah, there's um there's a lot more to it, I think. I think Doc has probably brought on as well. He's really good at defending the air, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Right in yeah. the air. So probably one of the reasons why I brought him on. So yeah, I'm 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 not necessarily up for a switch to a four. It's a it's a four it's a four out of possession anyway, isn't it? And a five in possession mostly. It's, it's much, a yeah. bit of a hybrid. So um and Totti plays that I know we give him a lot of stick, but he does play that role really well. He can he can either play at left back or he can come and play at centre half because he's just you see he's, he's in bomb on quite often as well, you know. I don't think he's he's end product could be better, but it's not awful. Yeah, I've not seen him whip a decent uh, not have the chance to whip a decent ball in there. In a while, but he can he can whip in a mean cross every now and then. But he, he almost plays those two positions, and he? he's a bit of a yeah. physical freak of nature. Mm. Um, but yeah, a final question is from Sean Mitchell. When is Dave getting himself an agent after his match of the day <laughs> to cameo? Matt, Matt's my agent anyway, because Matt brokers any financial deal. Um, so <laughs> if it was up to me, I would I would have very little money from talking all. So <laughs> that's my agent. Yeah. I'm the I'm the commercial guy. Yeah. No, to me, I always sounds big headed, but I, anything like this, I always push for a fee. So I, I always think, right? Even we like the talk sports stuff or whatnot. Like I get it. Like we're we're small fry, but they get content out of us. They've got sponsors. The only person who really misses out is us. So. Mm. I always ask. You don't always get, but um, who who else did they film with for match today? Too? Who else was there when you were there? I was on my own there, but I'd asked him, and he'd said they'd already filmed with Liam Keane. Um, 
they got um, Dazzle's misses, and then they had the uh, guys from Punjabi Wolves on as well. Have you have you watched it yet or not? I've not seen it back yet. I've I've, uh, I've retweeted it because someone had I, someone had screen recorded it and put it on. Uh, it was really good to be. Yeah, it, it turned. I was the first one on there. The little face pop up. I was I was, I was at home watching. It. I was like, oh, here we go. So um, I think. Yeah. I thought, I think I might have seen it pop up on the timeline earlier, but I thought it was undateables. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, when you're at home, you watch the news. Oh, fuck it. Why do they always find these Wolves fans? Where do they get these bloody Wolves fans from? <laughs> it, yeah. It's the most. we like, there's been like a shock sacking, and they go outside the, the club yeah. shop. Yeah, Gary O'Neill. Find the find the Gary sacked has it without a set of, without a pair of teeth in his head. Yeah, some teeth. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I've still not watched it, mate. But I'm gonna, I'll have a look at it straight after this. But are you happy with your appearance? Yeah, yeah, I've I'm, I'm got some good lines in there, mate. Yeah, so um, that was it. Was good to be fair. I, 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 it was weird because when I, I got there, I'd never met the, the like the presenter guy before. But the cameraman was like looking at me like, and he said, "We worked together before." I thought, "Here we go." Oh, no, here, we, here we go. <laughs> no, <laughs> that one a babe station was it? No, um, <laughs> I did. I did two with Premier League TV, I'm like two. Yeah, for yeah, for like two years ago, and he was the cameraman then, and it was yeah, it was him again. But I was happy because they originally wanted to film my bit outside the club shop, and it was tipping it down with rain. He goes, "Oh, we've had to go inside the stadium instead." I was like, oh, "It looks no. better in the ground." Hey, yeah, way but but I had to like lean against the railing. I did my my question bit, and he goes, "Right, we're gonna get some sexy shots now for like the cut scenes," and um, I was just I had to just smile at the camera and start like fist pumping and stuff. So. <laughs> Yeah. People it's are listening that, to this out of context. It sounds absolutely mad, to be fair. But, yeah. It's like um, when we did that thing for was it TNT Sport a few oh months ago, and I stood right at the bottom of the subway. Look, I picked the, the worst day. spot, worst time as well. Have, you couldn't have picked a worse spot to pull us in, and they're asking us like these questions. Like, these what does Jack Hayward mean to you? I'm like, mate, come on, like it's fucking five minutes to kick off here. I know, like I couldn't have done the one you did at the bottom of the subway. I where did you do one. yours? At like the, the sort of the top of the hill where the Billy Ryan meets the South Bank, where even that was bad enough, and that was like two minutes to kick off. To be fair though, like mom, like mom was at the bottom of the subway, and they asked me a question. I, I don't know what it was, but my answer was, um, "There's absolutely no way that this team goes down." Mark my words, at the end of the season, and then we got was it four nil against Brighton? Yeah, four Brighton one, four yeah. nil. Yeah. Like, that was oh, that game, wasn't it? Yeah. God. Well, that's why and, I was worried about this. They were asking us yeah. questions about Europe, and I thought. We can't lose to Sheffield United now. Like I know we won, obviously in the end, but for mate, they can't. They, if we lost like two 0 yesterday, they couldn't have aired that. So uh, it was good you know what? Fun. I thought they were going to do with those TNT clips as well. Have you seen? Have you yeah, seen that? that, 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 that TikTok, <laughs> right Wolverhampton. This city is gold. You know, yeah. That's exactly for that. He's done, he, he done one there recently. Wolves versus Luton. Yeah. He's like. Welcome to Molyneux. <laughs> yeah. This is Molyneux. Wolves, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> I thought that's what, yeah, that, I thought that's what, what was going to happen, but um, <laughs> thankfully nothing in bad. I feel like now we've done quite a few of these. You just kind of just play it safe, don't you, with your answers? Yeah, I, I did that. He, they didn't show him a bit about Europe. But I said like, I think we. We've got the quality to compete and, and get that place, but there's too much there's too much quality above us in the league. Um, I think they relied on the I think they used Liam Keane's answer for that, which was balanced as ever. So yeah, yeah. I, mean, I remember the BBC one I did uh, just before the quarterfinals of the Europa League. I don't know why, but I was mentioning like we we've, we've been to like Porto, we've been to Barcelona, but I said it in like I said like the city names in like a real weird. Accent like put to them back, I don't know. Like, do the rest of yeah, <laughs> like, dude, yeah, me a max, yeah, Ralby Thomas. Ralby Thomas. Thomas. That, that whole yeah. season was like Olympios, mate. That whole season was just iconic. <laughs> the, an shit show pronunciation yeah. from most content creators, <laughs> class, class. <laughs> um, think of the content we could make if we went to Europe, there, man. I know, man. It's stepped up a lot since then. If people are ever interested, just like even if you've got like a spare 10 minutes, just go back and look at some of our old stuff. And it, I still think it's good, but wait, I think it's stepped up a lot now, to be fair. We, so. we, could, uh, we could recreate that shower scene in Porto, mate. Oh, um, oh, that's the end of the pod, isn't it? That's the yeah, end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. They're great, them little shower head attachments, aren't they? They are fantastic. 
Anyway, that's enough for uh, that's enough for one week. I've enjoyed this game, mate. It's been a therapy. Um, the highlight being the Astro pay what a goal winner. So big congratulations to Ed again. But who's doing the podcast next week, Dave? I'm not here. George's not here. You reckon, well, you reckon you can coax Finn into maybe maybe showing his face? Yeah, I think Finn. We might have to get one more one more in. So any any suggestions? Drop them in the comment section. We'll see if we can get involved. Realistic, obviously. Can't you get, can't you get Gary O'Neill on? Or how yeah. about? I think Billy Wright would give a good opinion on what's going on. <laughs> <at the moment. laughs> uh, uh, Trump pull a few favors. Yeah. I think I, I still really want to get Cody on. He's doing he's doing the rounds at the minute as well. Uh, he's, not, he, he's just he's not playing at Leicester though, is he? He's played like six times this season. And he got an injury, didn't he? But I don't. Know. Yeah, but he only missed three games through injury. Oh, so. Yeah, I, we tried to reach out, but he didn't want to do it. And this was like just after just after he'd signed for Leicester. So we'll have again, to try and get some interviews done again. Yeah, because the end of the season, the summer. Because I think people are actually interested in Wolves at the minute. So <laughs> players will, ex-players will jump on. It's mad, it. on. it's mad how like it, the interest of switches. Mm. So you get have to get it. On. You know, you know, no, you know what the thing that it is is mad is not that you're doing well, but then you you, you beat. Tottenham away from home or Chelsea away from home and all of a sudden it's like, oh, Wolves, what a team, what a manager, Gary O'Neill. Not the fact that we'd like probably, what, won seven out of the last Premier League game, seven out of the last nine, mm-hmm. something like that. Wolves, Wolves, are just tweet, Wolves are just pe- uh, tweeted about that. Uh, okay, but as soon as you go to Tottenham and beat them. Wolves have put on uh, six Premier League wins from nine, yeah. Mm. And seven, 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 well, just two losses in the last nine, basically. Yeah, so I think that I, I think we actually underappreciate how good that is, you know. We've you been tremendous the teams, very, very good. Tremendous. Days. Gary O'Neill has um has proven a lot of people wrong, me including one of them, because I was really underwhelmed when he came in. But he loves to play on that in his interviews, doesn't he? He always he's very self-deprecating. Yeah. You know, I was, just an, I was just an average midfielder, and I can see why fans didn't want me. It's like, come on, Gary. Someone, it was, in, very quickly before we finish, someone had posted a really old. I think it was when he's still the youth coach, and they were like, "What? You, where do you see yourself in five years?" And he goes, "I want to be amongst one of the best English coaches." So, like, so is this an impression coach. or what? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> was it, you started it, didn't you? <laughs> I don't. I, don't, I can't. You need to do that. that. You need to do that. Yeah. You know, um, was yeah, no, um, uh, and he he wanted to he wants to manage England one day. So if the FA can call him, get your fucking hands off him <laughs> <laughs> now. <laughs> oh, who'd have thought we'd be having this conversation in September? Where are we saying? I know. I need to go. Please do not look at my reaction after the Ipswich game. <laughs> I lost my head after that. Yeah, but it was it was really poor, and he didn't go over to the fans and clap, which is which is frustrating. Which yeah. was even it, even more frustrating when you sat at home watching it on a stick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why do you care? No. Um, but yeah, hopefully, mate, you can draft someone in. Draft someone in who's uh... yeah. Let us know uh, suggestions in the comments or drop us a tweet um, if you're listening on the audio. Who would you like to hear the Dorset tones of next week? It's got to be a sensible suggestion, though. I don't. If you say, oh, well, maybe you can, you know, get Craig Dawson on. No, hey, uh, no ex players, just somebody that is in the Wolverhampton Wanderers social space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonderful, mate. Where can people find? Should they wish to follow you? At Dave as a party on Twitter and Instagram. And what? remember, if there's no gym post, it means I haven't been this week. Yeah, love that. Make sure you um, make sure you hold them accountable. Yeah. I was thinking of doing a. Uh, an accountability Instagram, like um, a, a new account, so like a post progress and stuff. But keep it private, and then at Talk the end, we could just do when I'm, when, fitness, when, yeah, we could, we could do it together. Yeah. If you want a PT session from Dave and I, <laughs> <laughs> well, we do a leg day and have McDonald's afterwards, and yes. yeah, get involved. Yeah, yeah. The booze, you know what? Uh, very quickly before we finish, my, my I do I only go to the gym on my own, so I don't have like a spot or anything. But mate, my leg day, I'm I'm squatting 100 kg on my own. You know, I'm pretty impressed with that. You should be able to squat your body, right? But and yeah. I'd imagine you're heavier than you're, you're lighter than 100 kg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it helps when you're five foot three. Yeah, yeah. just a little flex. <laughs> yeah. Oh, before yeah, before we do go, I had an accident in the gym last week as well. Told you, didn't I? Pissed, pissed yourself again. Pissed myself again. Shit myself on the bench. Um, <laughs> dropped a 36 kilogram drum dumbbell on my face. Um, whilst whilst lying back, pressing. 
Oh, man, I don't know. Because I, I was lying on the bench still, like, pinned with his dumbbell in my face. So, thankfully, he still had it in my hand. And all I could taste was blood in my mouth. And I couldn't see my nose. And I thought it was it was throbbing like a fucking cobbler's thumb. It was, <laughs> oh, it was agony. And I thought, my nose is going to be, like, spread across my face here. Yeah. Um, but thankfully, it wasn't. I've got a bit of bruising. And the swelling's gone down now. I've had a bit of a black eye. But absolute stinker. And the worst thing about it was, mate, quarter to six prime time the gym was rammed and everyone was just looking at me and this big bastard behind me was like huge he just stood up and went anyway sugary shit um <laughs> i am m cooper right on twitter if you if you've got any suggestions for riga and you've been either tweet me or Put it in the comments section because I do check the comments. Uh, I don't check them if you give me abuse. So, so there's, I do. there's your incentive. Mm. <laughs> uh, we are talking walls across all platforms. If you have enjoyed the video, let us know. Drop us a like if you're watching it, and subscribe if you're new. If you're listening to Apple on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please leave us a five star review. It doesn't matter what the uh, the actual words in the review say. You can put anything you want, but yeah, the five star review helps. Um, but yeah, take care. Have a fantastic week. Um, Hopefully beat Brian, beat Newcastle, and we're on our way to Europe. Take it easy, guys. Gosh.